With the rapid growth in Hong Kong and the increased cross-border rail passenger traffic, in 1998, the then Kowloon Canton Railway Corporation, KCRC, applied for a study brief for the Lok Ma Chow Spur Line. The Spur Line connects Sheng Shui in the east to Lok Ma Chow in the west. With a combined underground tunnel and viaduct design, the new line will run from the existing Sheng Shui station to a new station at Lok Ma Chow. One of the key ecological measures of the Lok Ma Chow Spur Line is the compensation measure for ecological impacts. The Lok Ma Chow area, mainly occupied by fish ponds, supports a diverse range of flora and fauna. The Lok Ma Chow Station, a four-level building occupying an area of about nine hectares, would cause inevitable fish pond loss. Fish ponds are considered of value to birds as they function ecologically as a substantial source of food supply. This is supported by the results of a study by the Hong Kong SAR government. Furthermore, Log Ma Chow is near the Maipo Nature Reserve and the Ramsar site, an area recognized as internationally important to water birds. Mitigation measures were needed and they should meet the criteria under the Environmental Impact Assessment Ordinance, EIAO. For example, like for like, either the same kind of species or habitats of the same size or the same kind of ecological function and capacity. After the KCRC submitted the EIA report in November 2001, it was approved by the Environmental Protection Department, the EPD, and the environmental permit was issued to KCRC in April 2002. The major mitigation measure is to enhance a fish pond area adjacent to the station in two stages. First, an initial enhancement area, IEA, not less than 15 hectares before the construction of the station. Then an ecological compensation area, ECA, not less than 30 hectares, which comprises the IEA prior to the operation of the spur line. The major targets of the IEA are to compensate the loss of fish ponds by enhancement. The IEA needs to achieve the bird densities of six target species. Little egret, black-faced spoonbill, Grey Heron, Great Egret, Great Cormorant, and Chinese Pond Heron. The bird densities are to be two times higher than those recorded in the control area. The Habitat Creation and Management Plan HCMP, sets out the methods to create and manage the IEA. There are three major elements. First is reprofiling. Normal pond buns or banks of fish ponds are steep and not suitable for birds to utilize while a gentle pond bund can allow the birds to feed on them. Second is water level management. A drained pond can facilitate the birds to feed on small fish and shrimps on the bottom. The third is fish stocking. Provision of fish could attract birds. An independent committee was also set up to oversee the HCMP. Construction of the IEA started in 2002. Mitigation measures were carried out in various stages. 
pond buns were reprofiled to create shallow feeding habitats. Man-made islands were formed. Different vegetation was established to enhance the habitat for a variety of birds. And pipes were laid to control the water level to facilitate water bird feeding. The IEA was finished and operating in 2003. The IEA is managed and operated by contractors. In order to reduce disturbance level, an authorized persons are not allowed on site. Fish stocking, one of the management measures stated in the HCMP, was conducted regularly. Between 1,000 to 2,000 kilograms of fish were stocked each time. Frequency and locations were selected and adjusted in accordance with monitoring results. The vegetation on pond buns was also maintained to make it easier for birds to utilize. The number of birds in the IEA were monitored and recorded to see the effects of the enhancement. Data from the control areas, which are active fish ponds, were also collected to compare with the IEA. The monitoring results show the targets for the IEA were achieved and a construction permit for the station was issued. All six target bird species were found in the IEA. Four of the six target species have reached the required densities. Other fauna such as dragonflies were also found in the IEA. In order to investigate the key factors for the success of the wetland compensation, which could provide reference for future projects, the Environmental Protection Department commissioned an audit study. The study comprises of two phases. The first phase for the IEA and the second phase for the ECA. The audit team performed field visits to the IEA to check the implementation of the HCMP and the monitoring works. 
different versions of the HCMP monitoring reports and environmental committee minutes were also reviewed. This is the first project under EIAO to have the mitigation measures implemented in advance to minimize the impact of the project. This approach could greatly enhance the effectiveness of the mitigation measures, especially those related to habitat creation or enhancement, as it takes time for habitats to establish and develop. Permission for the commencement of the station construction was subject to whether the IEA performance met the target stipulated in the environmental permit. This approach could ensure the planned functions or targets were achieved. Instead of a fixed management plan, an adaptive management plan was adopted in the scheduling and programming of the management measures. The targets for the IEA, as stated in the environmental permit, were measured by the densities of six bird species. The audit team used another approach to measure the outcome of the IEA. The habitat functions of commercial fish ponds, the IEA and MIPO Nature Reserve were compared. It was found that not only had the bird densities of the six species within the IEA increased, the habitat quality of the IEA was also higher than commercial fish ponds. Several factors might contribute to the success of the IEA. Black nets were put in to separate the site office from the border road traffic. The IEA was a restricted area. Management works were scheduled in a way to minimize disturbance levels. Dogs commonly seen around commercial fish ponds were deterred. Provision of food by fish stocking could attract fish feeding waterfowl, such as cormorants. This measure could influence the distribution pattern of cormorants. Densities of two out of the six target species, the Chinese pond heron and little egret, could not meet the environmental permit's requirements to double the densities when compared with control area. Chinese pond herons are often seen hiding in the high grasses around the ponds, especially abandoned fish ponds. But the majority of pond buns within the IEA were maintained by regular grass cutting, similar to most active fish ponds. If high grasses are the limiting factor for Chinese pond heron density, the IEA could not enhance this resource for Chinese pond heron. The little egret is comparatively less sensitive to human activities. It is easier for them to utilize drained commercial fish ponds. During winter, there are still many commercial fish ponds to be drained in the deep bay area which are available for the little egret. This study is unique in that it is the first in Hong Kong to have large-scale mitigation measures in advance of construction. In order to ensure that the mitigation measures stated in the HCMP are successfully implemented and maintained, the permit holder is held responsible for the long-term management, monitoring and auditing of the Lok Ma Chau Spur Line project after its operation. On the 15th of August 2007, the Lok Ma Chau Spur Line commenced operation, providing commuters another crossing point into mainland China. The Total Ecological Compensation Area, ECA, now under management, comprises 31 hectares of open water fish ponds and 2 hectares of marsh. Some of the measures to be implemented in the ECA included enlarging small fish ponds to reduce enclosure effects, establishing marginal emergent vegetation 
manipulating fish stocking and pond drain down to facilitate foraging of water birds. Target species numbers during the operation phase of the spur line increase to 30, which include 20 additional bird species, and four non-avifauna species. The enhancement ratio for bird abundance became 1.6 upon the operation phase. There was no target level set for the four non-avifauna species. The auditing work of the ECA commenced. The audit consisted of site visits and review of monthly monitoring reports. Site visits were conducted for verification of the implementation of the HCMP, observation and commenting on the ECA. Field visits were conducted in winter as most of the 20 target bird species are migratory birds. Comparison of bird abundance between the ECA and control areas focused on six large water bird species as there were more data available for these species. Only three species of large water birds exceeded target levels during the audit period. Direct comparison of bird abundance between the ECA and the control areas could be subjected to bias from extreme counts. Therefore, monthly mean densities of each target species were also compared using statistical tests. The increase of bird abundance in the ECA was, however, considered merely a redistribution of birds within the Deep Bay area, rather than a real overall increase in bird abundance. Vegetation cover management, which is important to fauna, was also audited. The target of keeping coverage of undesirable invasive and exotic plant species lower than 10% was not fulfilled. More vigorous measures need to be considered. The effectiveness of the ECA was also evaluated by a more integrated approach, the ecological functionality approach. In this approach, habitats are not only assessed by their area, but also by the levels of function they can provide. These tools will help to apply a uniform and commonly accepted standard for compensation and mitigation in the future. The main objective of this study is to identify factors leading to the successful implementation of the Lok Marchau Compensation Wetland. However, data collection and presentation of the monitoring programs may need to be adjusted in order to achieve this purpose. A number of implemented management measures, however, were considered important. Pond reprofiling produced pond slopes of gentle gradient, which can provide more roosting areas for water birds when the ponds are drained, and more feeding areas when the ponds are filled. Draining of ponds concentrates aquatic prey within ponds in shallow water in winter, when water bird abundance increased. Disturbance control can enhance the regular uses of the compensation wetland by water birds. In addition, water quality is influential to the abundance of aquatic life, which is the food base of water birds. Also, poor water quality will increase the risk of botulism. The functions as feeding areas are affected by the conditions of the aquatic communities in the pond and the abundance of stocked fish remaining in the pond. However, both factors were adversely affected by the low pH value of the ponds. The water quality issue might affect the condition of the aquatic communities in the ponds and the survival of stocked fish. The maintenance work and monitoring programs laid out in the HCMP were basically fully implemented. However, methods of data presentation, data collection and data analysis in the monitoring programs may need to be adjusted in order to produce more accurate and useful results. In the long term, the experience gained from the Lok Ma Chow Compensation Wetland will be useful in the future for the design and implementation 
of other wetland mitigation in Hong Kong.